All right, Jeff Goodman here with another edition of Off the Carousel, and uh, we turn to new Western Kentucky head coach Steve Lutz. And Steve, how are you? Congrats, first of all. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, doing good. Uh, just coming off Derby weekend, so it's a little bit foggy on Monday, but you know, it's uh, it's it's been good. It's been a great it's been a great month. Yeah, I didn't pick the right one. I didn't pick the right horse this time. I, you know, seven years ago, I did the Derby and killed it on the Oaks. Uh, hit like four trifectas. What came up uh, empty on the Derby? How'd you do on the Derby? Uh, I, I didn't even get a chance to bet, but I, I went to, um, I guess what you would call a Derby party. Yeah. And uh, I learned a lot. Like I learned uh, the boxes and the trifectas. And um, had I bet on what they told me to, I would have uh, placed on two of the three. I mean, obviously nobody knew 14 was going to come out of the, or eight, sorry, eight was going to come out of the woodworks and, and win the damn thing. But uh, it was fun. It was interesting. They love their horses up here and they love the Derby. They do that. They do. Um, you, you had been a, a career assistant for 25 plus years. And then you got your chance at Texas a and Corpus Christi, uh, you were on the beach. You were having fun on the beach. I know you were. Uh, yeah, winning, winning, and uh, hitting the beach a little bit. It was, it was a perfect spot for you. What did you learn in those two years as a head coach uh, that maybe again you'll be able to take to to Western Kentucky now? Uh, I mean, it's a lot harder than you think because you sit over there in that chair and you go, "Well, if I was the head ball coach, I would do this," yeah. or. I would handle it this way. And then you, you know, obviously you get the, um, the responsibility put on your shoulders and you're, you're kind of looking around going, well, who the hell, you know, who, who the hell am I going to run this by? Yeah. And ultimately there, there's not many people you can talk to about it. Right. I mean, I talked to my wife and I talked to a few friends, but you got to figure out what the heck you want to do. Cause it doesn't matter what those other guys think. It doesn't matter what the, what the staff wants. It matters what you're able to tolerate. It matters what you're able to put up with and then ultimately live with it and then figure it out. And uh, like Greg McDermott, um, Matt Painter, those guys are great at figuring it out. And, and what I mean by that is all these guys we recruit, none of them are perfect. You know, I'm not perfect, but, You've got to figure we, out we a know way. You're not perfect. We yeah, no shit. Yeah. So, you know, you got to figure out a way to make it work, right? You got to make it work with your kids and your wife. It's the same thing with players at times. Um, what do you, what can you overlook? What, what are you not negotiating on those sorts of things? Why was this such a perfect job for you um, at Western Kentucky? Obviously you've been kind of all over a, as an assistant, you know, Midwest, you've been kind of, yeah, obviously SMU, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. You've been you're strong in Texas. Why was this a, a great spot for you? Uh, at number one, because it, it's kind of the right time um, for me. You know, I was able to to go down and and be around my family, my mom, especially my brothers and sisters, for a couple of years, which I hadn't done. And like my mom turns ninety tomorrow, and I got to have my kids around her. Um, you know, for the latter years of her life, but I got to learn, right? I got to learn um, not under a microscope. A lot of times, you know, you you get a job and you leave the Big Ten and, and you go to Western Kentucky and man, there's message boards and Twitter and social media and they're critiquing every move. Like I wasn't here a week, maybe two weeks. And uh, Trey Tennyson left Corpus Christi. And so I bring Trey in for a visit. And I think, yeah, man, we got a really good shot to get him. It's going to be us and TCU, blah, blah, blah. Well, NIL blows me out of the water. He goes to TCU. Jamie does a great job. Man, these people are going, hey, he can't even recruit his own player. No. <laughs> so, you know, they're crushing you a little bit, which is is totally cool. I, I get it. I'm uh, I'm okay with where I'm at and who I am and and everything that comes with it. But my point being is <clears throat> when you go down to Corpus Christi, man, you can make some mistakes and really you're not going to get raked over the coals by it, right? And so you get to figure some things out on your own. How do you describe um, your coaching style and, and the way you want to play and the way you want to coach to those 
who really don't know you yet at, at, at WKU? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I probably coach like I parent a little bit. And and I know that sounds crazy, but like I, I'm when I talk to my kids, I, I talk to them in in matter of fact terms like, OK, hey, you know, my oldest daughter right now, she's looking at um, internships with the Pacers and also with Major League Baseball. And I'm like, OK, well, if you go to this, hey, here's the positives, here's the negatives. Well, if you do the other one, here's the positives, here's the negatives. But you can screw both of them up. So let's not do that. Right. And I, I, I'm the same way with the, with the fellas, like, Hey man, you are really good at coming off of screens and um, catching and shooting. So, man, I want to get you five of those every single game. And if you're rolling and we're going to get you 10, now you're maybe not so good at getting downhill and finishing at the rim. Well, you know, my, my ratio of shots for you needs to be five threes to one at the rim or vice versa. And in the same kind of thing in the post, man, if I can get you on the left block and you're great with your right hand jump hook, I'm going to throw you that ball as much as I can. Right. But I'm not going to pick and pop and have you shoot a bunch of threes because that's asinine, right? It, it makes no sense. Um, so I try to just be very direct and honest with them. Um, but I tell them when I make a mistake too, I, I, I don't sit up, uh, on that hill and live in that glass house and, and not act like, I don't know that I screw things up too. All right. So you're, you're following a guy that I have said over and over and over might be the most feared recruiter of our time. Now, again, a lot of people will, will laugh at me when I say that now, some of the young guys that have come in the last five, 10 years don't understand that when. Rick Stansbury walked in the gym 20 years ago with, with the Mississippi State shirt on. And, and you know, like, he, he, they go three or four deep. And guys would just leave. So you, you follow, again, a guy that didn't get it done uh, to get to the NCAA tournament, but got talent in to, to Western Kentucky. Uh, what, what's that like for you in terms of, um, again, obviously I don't you know it's it's not the same as maybe he was at Mississippi State because he didn't get to the tournament but he brought in a, no shortage of talent over the last five six years yeah I mean those guys they have a lot they've had a lot of talent through here and they've won games unfortunately at Western Kentucky um, your standard is to go to the NCAA tournament right and and you start to look at the number of sweet 16s that this university has been to been to a couple final fours i mean you just uh you got to you got to understand the the field right and and the field is that the standard of excellence here is that we're going to go to the NCAA tournament we're going to win games in the NCAA tournament we want to go to the final four and and give ourselves a, a chance to uh to win a national title. I mean, there's only two schools in the country, if I'm not mistaken, Kentucky and uh, Kansas that have more conference titles than we do. Wow. wow. Think about that that's at crazy. Western Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. No, um, that's crazy. And, and, but, you know, I mean, I think at the end of the day, uh, you're, you're measured upon your team, not your talent. Right. And then, so that's my, I don't want to say pitch, but that's my quest is to build the best team here right for us to be able to recognize our goals you know it's it, we've all got to collect talent we've all got to acquire talent but you've got to still have the requisite amount of talent to go along with leaders to go along with role players to go along blah 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 right and and that's our that's our big that's our big thing is to to build the best team um and put that team out on the floor next year so you, you lost certainly a good amount of talent in, in the portal, which happens every coaching change for the most part. Yeah. There aren't many guys that are going to be able to, you know, um, retain right now right. after a coaching change. So you lose McKnight, you lose Sharp, you lose a couple other guys, but those are the main ones, Rawls, I guess. Um, how realistic is it for you guys to be in the hunt to win the, the conference, you know, tournament or regular season title in year one when – You've had to flip the roster. The good thing is you got the portal, right? That's the, the positive is everybody's flipping the roster these days for the most yeah. part. So you're not alone, but 
you know, you don't really know the league well yet. Um, you know, I, I guess where do you stand in terms of re- expectations, realistic expectations in year one? Well, I mean, that's a hard question to answer because I still have five scholarships open, right? And uh, you need a couple point guards, you need a couple big guys. Are we close on some guys? Yeah, absolutely. And with uh, the the portal being so fluid and rosters being so fluid and, you know, us having three or four more days till the portal closes, I mean, it's hard to answer that. But I mean, you've obviously known me. I'm not wired to come in here and say, oh, I'm trying to build for year three. That's that's just not who I am. Um, I'm trying to put the best team on the floor so that we can go to the tournament next year. You know, sel- selfishly, I've I've been absolutely blessed to go to like, I think this is eight, it would be my eighth tournament straight. Really? Just, between, it's sick, between, right? I mean, yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy. And uh, but that's the way I'm wired. And that's what we're we're pushing for and and I want to make happen and there's no reason it can't happen I mean you look at uh I don't know you look at the league I mean everybody has been decimated at some point or at some position by the portal it's just you're gonna have to look to rebuild your roster every year you, you know you want to keep kids in 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 the fold but man you can't count on that you just can't so what's your kind of theory going forward? Because obviously you got to go heavy portal. Even yep. even even once you get your legs under you next year, and, and you're going to go heavy portal. But what's your ideal construction of a team right now? Do you even know? Is it, you know, half portal, try to get half high school kids? Maybe, you know, you've done some work with some international kids as well. What's your ideal blueprint if you have one? I'm all over the map. I, I don't have one. Um, I would like to get some high school guys because I'd like to have some people um, that are going to stay in the program for four years, especially in the state of Kentucky where, you know, uh, arguably you've got Kentucky, Louisville, and then right there is Western Kentucky. So these kids, um, if, you know, if Kentucky's full and and maybe we don't get that kid or, they beat us on a kid or however you want to say it, those guys want to come here. And so if you can get those guys and keep them for four years, man, you, you've, you've got a heck of a deal. But um, right now I'm, I'm probably leaning a little more towards experience. Um, I think we need experience. I think we need guys that have been, you know, in the fight before and understand what the fight is about. Obviously I've, you know, I've coached junior college. I played junior college. I, associate with junior college guys and so that's never off of the the table for us and uh one of my assistant coaches that I just hired Hank Plona obviously he was uh one of the most successful junior college coaches in the country so um I'll stay with that blueprint but I want to mix it up especially um guys that are within you know 100 to 200 miles of this campus man I'd love to have some really really good high school players and keep them well, you've already, I mean, listen, the, at least two of the guys you brought in transfer-wise um, come from winning programs, right? Like, that's key, isn't it? Brandon Newman coming from Purdue, you obviously knew him very well. Um, then then the kid, Baba Carfe, from College of Charleston, I got a chance, you, you know, I was down in Charleston forever yeah. over the, the offseason, spent some time around him. What a good kid, um, talented, you know, a little raw, um Mm -hmm. offensively but plays hard uh I think he's got a high upside and again just probably wasn't getting as many minutes as he would have liked at a place like Charleston uh how important when you're looking I mean I think every coach says this every coach says I want to get guys from winning programs well you can't all get them from winning programs I mean there's only a certain amount of kids that come from winning programs I, I believe in it wholeheartedly I mean you know Those two guys have been coached. Um, They know what it looks like. They know what the work looks like. And uh, it's hard to teach people that. So, you you know, when you can bring guys in that have that, man, that really, really helps you. Um, But then, you you know, we took a young man named Don McHenry, which, you know, he played at Indian Hills and he's a first team All-American. Man, he knows what winning looks like as well. And I think that that stuff matters. Um, 
I'd almost take a little less talent from a, from a winning program versus a guy that's just off the charts who, you know, maybe doesn't understand about getting up and getting shots up and then going to class and then going to practice and then getting more shots up and then going to study all and then coming back to the gym. Like those guys are the ones that help you win. Um, you know, it's the guys that don't understand the day-to-day -day grind and, and stacking up good days on top of one another. And then ultimately it, you know, it builds a conference title and, and you get to go to the NCAA tournament. Those, those guys have a hard time. So on your gravestone, is it going to say the guy who discovered Zach Eady? Is that what we're going to put on there? I don't know. I sure hope not. I, I love Zach, and he's a heck of a player, but I sure hope I do a little more than just discover Zach Eady. I'll, I'll hey, say That's that. a big one, though. That was a big, a big one. one. Yeah, that's a big one. But, you know. I, I, what was he like? The, the first time, again, you and I have talked about this a little bit, but when you saw the the now National Player of the Year who hopefully will come back for another year to Purdue, as long as they, you know, Painter can get him enough NIL. I think he'll be back for another year. Um, what was he like that first time you saw him? Where was it? And and what do you remember? Yeah, it's a good one. Um, so, you know, and I hate to say it this way, but when those NCAA academies came out, most power five programs are looking at those things going, man, these are a waste of our time. You know, we're better off at NBA top 100 camp. So, the thing about Matt and, and me is you, you go and you work, right? And you evaluate. And so I walk into Houston, to the Academy in Houston, and I see this monster. And I'm saying to myself, okay, man, we've had really good success with Isaac and Travion and Harms and those guys. And, and we needed bigs in that class. That class was him, uh, Kalkbrenner, Hunter Dickinson, uh, Colin Castleton, you know, those are guys that we were kind of on. And so I, I watch him and they play him in the high post and he's got great passing skills. And I'm like, man, this dude's pretty good. So I call paint and I'm like, Hey coach, I just saw this kid. He's really good. And you know, coach doesn't get too high and too low. I mean, he's going to be like, well, okay, no problem, whatever. He said, dig into it and get back to me. And then Obviously, I call his AU coach and get a hold of him and mom and all that. But uh, Zach was so he was so new to the recruiting process, right? It was almost like a breath of fresh air. And then things kind of tailed off a little bit with it. And then uh, the IMG guys, we kind of circled back with them. And then it picked up heavy and quick. And then we were we were lucky enough to get it done. But there was a lot of discrepancy. Would he go in the in this class or would they reclass him for another year and all that? But, uh, Hey, will you play like, because you coached under paint for a while, like, is that something that you take from paint? Like he's one of the few guys that's still going with traditional bakes. Let's be honest. There yeah. aren't a lot of them left. He's had success with it. Where, where do you stand with that? Are you, Hey, you know, I paint good. You, you take those traditional bigs. I'm going to go more with the athletic dudes. Uh, like Baba Carr and, and some of those other guys? Yeah, I, I'm, I haven't found one. I would take one, and I would love one if I could get one. We recruited a kid a couple weeks ago, and he ended up going somewhere else. But I told him, I go, hey, man, I promise you I'll throw you the basketball. I promise you. Um, but at, at a and Corpus Christi, I didn't have a, a big guy um, that got quality minutes like that. You know, so you, you just got to take what you can get and then you've got to figure out the best way to play with them. But yes, I, I believe in it. If you can get one of those guys and you can throw them the basketball and put pressure on the rim and then build skill and shooting around them, man, you're you're just you're going to make the game easier for yourself. And and with this team, you know, we've got skill in shooting. I mean, Dante Allen is going to be a really good three point shooter in this league. Brandon Newman should be a good three point shooter in this league. Um, so if we could get somebody inside like that, I'll throw them the ball. That's my recruiting pitch for anybody that's listening out there. Any of you five guys. So my last question to you is, is you and I are about the same age. We've both been around this game for a while. There have been so many changes here in the last year so quickly, right? I mean, you've got NIL, you've got the transfer portal. Kids don't have to sit out anymore. You got the extra COVID year. 
Uh, what am I forgetting? I'm sure I'm forgetting another big one. But those uh, are FBI some of the scandals. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you get the scandals that hopefully are behind us a little bit. Um, it's just been so much so quick. Uh, where do you think the game is right now? And, you know, I hear it from so many coaches of like the frustration, because especially in a place like Western Kentucky, right? If you have a really good young player, if you have a really good high school player you, you bring in this year and maybe he plays 10 or 15 minutes this year. And then as a sophomore, he takes a jump, plays 30 minutes, makes a, a, an all league team in, in conference USA. There's a good chance you don't ever coach him as a junior. You know, yeah. those high majors are going to go after him and they're going to have a lot more NIL than you. How, how hard is this to, to process um, everything that's changed? Yeah, it, it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, and and that's, to me, where I don't want to tell the fans what to think or do, but that's where the fans have to adjust, um, in my mind. Like, here's my deal. These players, um, they're dealing the, the cards that they were dealt. They're dealing with those, right? They didn't, they didn't say, hey, I want – NIL and I want it to be 50 or a hundred or $500,000. But now that the money has gotten to be where it is, they have to do everything in their power to take advantage of it. So sure. for us to be mad at them would be stupid. Right. Um, with that being said, I still believe in the thing that I loved about being in college versus the pros and, and is the relationships, right? So if I am with you for a couple of years, well, I want to be with you the rest of your life. I want to be at your wedding. I want to be there when you have kids and help you through all of that. And the transfer portal and the NIL, in my mind, has just made this more transactional rather than relationship-based. But again, don't be mad at the kids, the kids for... for dealing with the hand that they're dealt. I worry about the academic component too. I don't think it's, it's, it's talked about enough of these kids that are transferring multiple times. I get it. You know, people say, well, you know, whatever, 40% of all kids transfer in college, whether they're, they're athletes or not. Yes. I, I agree. The one time is fine. It's some of these kids, you know, Mikey hand last year, a kid at Penn state was on his fifth, school yeah and and, yeah. and i've talked to him great kid whatever all the power to him maybe he could handle it and, and i think it was year seven in college yeah. um you know i just worry again that these kids don't understand when they make the decision to transfer how much it's going to affect them from a from a standpoint of again yeah it may take them another year in college uh because they're going to lose credits yeah it's crazy i mean in in Every official visit I've had for the last 20 years, you meet with the academic guy and he kind of goes through your transcript, but very, very seldom does the student athlete or the family say, all right, man, show me the degree plan and show me what transfers as a direct transfer. What's an elective. Yep. Nobody does that. Nobody's that invested in it. Right. Is but, Hey, is the first question now you get, from most kids is it about nil or no it's not the first but it's in the first conversation most of the time yeah yeah and, and some of them that are a little more well versed in it will just ask if you have a collective and those sorts of things versus how much can can you straight up offer me and right. you know i mean it, again I, I full transparency you know, you have to, you can't, you can't bury your head in the sand and act like this isn't happening. So you have to address it and you have to um, at least say that you have that, but I don't, it always blows my mind, but like, how can a kid have a conversation with the coach and that coach go, Hey, I'm going to give you $150,000. Well, that's not the way this is supposed to work, right? The collective is supposed to determine all of that and work with the kid. So this is the problem right now. It, it's, yeah. it's, it is kind of the wild west in terms of there are no consistent rules. Right. And, and so the transfer portal then exposes some things too now. So I, I talked to a kid the other night and he goes, Hey coach, I want some NIL money, but 
whatever you guys tell me I'm going to get, I just want to make sure I get. And I said, why do you say that? He goes, well, this school promised me X dollars. And let's just say the number was 50. And I go, okay, how much did you get? He goes 11. And I go, oh, I go, well, I'm an honest person. Like if, if you're supposed to get X from the collective, then you should get X from the collective as long as you do your deal. Right. But That's you the got hard to gosh. Yeah. You got to show up and you got to do the tweets and you got to do the PR stuff. If you don't do that, it's a business. So they're not going to pay you. And they need contracts. They do. I yeah. mean, bottom line is they only, and a lot of them have these agents. Now Here, here's another issue for me. So they have these agents that some are smaller agents that they're getting these kids and they're, they're, they're trying to tell them go in the portal every year because they're going to make more money that way. Though That's the way the agents are making money. Obviously the more money these kids make and throw them in the portal because then it becomes sort of a bidding process to some degree. It's the darndest thing ever. And I'm not going to throw out names, yep. but I had a guy tell my assistant the other day, he goes, Hey, you can get this kid for 75. This kid's 150. This kid's 30. And, and you're just going, how do you have all of these kids? And so I, I, like I start asking around cause I, I want to know how this stuff works. And all these guys are doing is they're DM and all these kids and the kids, that's the way the world works. They hit them back on the DM and he goes, Hey, I've got five schools that are, you know, and I'm going to use Corpus Christi as the example. Hey, maybe Corpus is giving you 10, but I've got five schools that'll give you 75,000. If you go in the portal, that's right. what the hell are we doing guys? And of course, some coaches are just going to say, yeah, yeah, I'll give them 75. Right. right. Like, and then when it comes down to it, they got on campus or maybe, you know, I mean, listen, we've heard plenty of stories last year of kids that didn't get paid what they were promised or told, or maybe again, I've learned whatever number I hear out there, I usually cut it, cut it in half right now, whatever number I'm hearing they, these guys get paid, you know, some 600 grand for, this dude who averaged eight points a game, like, come on, man. like, come on. Uh, yeah. Anyway, all right, listen, congrats again. Um, one of the best <laughs> hires in the cycle. I I've said it uh, over and over again. I believe it. I think Western Kentucky fans are going to be uh, excited uh, about you, about the way you coach, about the way you recruit. You've obviously had success. You've worked for some of the best coaches in the country. You and I have known each other a long, long time. So basically my advice to you is, is just don't F it up. Yeah. I hear you, brother. <laughs> so, good luck. Uh, another edition off the carousel, new Western Kentucky head coach, Steve Lutz. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.